I am ready to continue those keys. All right, you. now you done said it. You done said it now. So you better hold to it because I'll be there. <laughs> when you look up triple threat in the dictionary, you will see a picture of this girl, baby. She's a singer. She's an actress. She's an activist. She is that girl. Yes, you know her as Blanca from the amazing show Pose and lots of stage productions like Rent and Little Shop of Horror. She was also the first trans Latina woman to represent Olay Beauty in 2019. And not only that, she has a new single that is storming the pop world called Something to Say. Baby, please welcome to the stage, Michaela J. Michaela J, baby, she's got something to say. How are you doing? It rhymes a little bit. I'm doing good, you know. I love the little Michaela J got something to say. When that when my producer told me that, he was like, hey, that rhymes. I was like, I know it's gonna be good, child. It's gonna be good. <laughs> well, I little always start slogan. all my interviews asking, what is she giving? I see a little orange moment that goes great with this little highlight. Believe it or not, it's actually from a bathing suit store. And I was like, you know what, this is real cute. Let me just tie a little belt around it, give a little, you know, Martha P. Johnson, a little necklace that India yeah. is out here promoting and just keep it moving, you know? <laughs> so let's talk about something to say because mm -hmm. it is so empowering. The song is so soulful. And I don't think anyone can listen to it without having a smile on their face. So please tell me how it came about. Me and Verdine, actually, I met Verdine through a good mutual friend of mine who I consider like my brother. His name is Evan Ross. Evan Ross so happened to have his number. They were having a conversation about me within the label and Verdine said he wanted to work with me. Then it happened. Evan set it all up. We all met and then the rest was history. We went into the studio, I would say about three days later, maybe a week later, got the song done within a day. And then the mixing and everything happened and that's how it was, how it was built. We all just like collectively came together and the producer Neil told me like, this is something that's really gonna shift the narrative. It's gonna change things. And me being insecure, I was like, are you sure? Or I don't know, like, what about, you know, I'm, I'm one of the girls, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, very insecure because you know, there's not a lot of trans women in the music industry or that are really pushing and striving and actually making ends meet, making a wave. And mm. they have faith in me. They have faith in me. They broke down all of my barriers. These are strong black men, hetero mm. black men who see me. They mm. see me. And I was like, oh, and so we went into it. And that, I mean, that's how it all happened. The moment they saw me, the more I felt even more comfortable seeing myself and letting more people see me, letting people see the person inside of MJ, which is Michaela J. And I think that's how it all sprawled out. And now it's out, baby, you know? Yes, it is out. And I am streaming the hell out of it. And everyone else is watching to do the same. A lot of the fans know you from Pose and, and um, your mm -hmm. amazing work there. This also, this single and like future of the music that you're putting out feels like a reintroduction of MJ, yeah. of Michaela J, where you like, this is how I'm going to reintroduce myself as Pose is coming to a close. I did. It was definitely strategic. I wanted people to see the individual who puts the work into her acting, which is mm. MJ Rodriguez. You know, I mean, no, she's not a caricature that I created in my head. She is me. And also I wanted people to understand the difference between my nickname and get to know the person behind MJ, get to get to know Michaela J, get to know the person that that's not Blanca, you know, yeah. the person that is outside of Blanca and still has a lot of love in her heart, still is nurturing, but also has a different edge. I mean, this woman grew up in 1987. I grew up you know, in the 2000s. And mm -hmm. that's a total different generation. I grew up in a generation right now where, you know, we're a little bit more freer. We're a little bit more open. We're a little bit more understanding. I wanted people to really see Michaela. I wanted them to see what I have to offer too through my music and yeah. how much music really drives my life. Like it really does. But you know this, Johnny, you know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, it's so funny. I'm like the MJ that I know from years ago is still there, but all of the journey and the love that you put into your work is really showing to the rest of the world and you're allowing people to love you and you're loving them in the process. So it's just, baby! <laughs> Something to say feels like to me, just like the perfect pride anthem. Do you have any pride anthems that you've heard over the years that you love and who would you love to collaborate with in the future? Oh, there's a lot of people, okay. 
who? Yes. Load a question. Got it for you. So <laughs> I feel like the anthems that I've been listening to have been Vincent, a uh, higher, one of my favorite songs. Alex yes. Newell came out with a, a, a lot of music like about three years ago that I still listen to that are very uplifting, very, it gives anthem, honey. It yeah. gives that very much. <laughs> And as far as the people that I would love to collaborate with and I would love to just really get in the studio with, Kelani, Chloe mm. and Halle, Doja Ooh. Cat, Ooh. Megan Thee Stallion. Yes. You know, um, I don't know how they would feel about my sound. I feel like they would love it, but I, I also don't know. These women I've never met in my life before, but I just adore them and I'm inspired by them and I look mm. up to them. I've also realized that we're a part of a generation like that is not like the older generation. We're part of a generation that's different and um, yeah. we're empowered in our womanhood. We're empowered in our bodies. And, you know, I just love that about them. And especially Doja Cat, honey, <laughs> get me on a stage with her. Let me perform with her. It's so funny because I know, I know you can perform down and I'm so happy. Like even the Out Loud Festival that you did, like it was so nice to see you with dancers, the whole production. So I'm just really excited to see where that goes. Um, but speaking of where things go, we just wrapped up the third season of Pose. Yeah. I want to hear from you what it feels like to put an end to that incredible journey and what it means to you to be on that ride that is Pose. Ooh. Um, it's extremely emotional. Every single time I think and look back at it, I just, I realize how much I've been taught from that darn show. I was just so insecure. A lot of people didn't know it, but I was just, I'm extremely professional, but there's also insecurities that come with being professional. I was very closed off, very to the book, very disciplined. There were moments where I just didn't open up because I wanted to be so perfect. Capricorn mm. syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> this third season, Closing it out so beautifully, I finally got to see each and every last one of the characters, especially Blanca. The way they wrapped up her story, it was beautiful. I actually learned that third season separated me from her. I got to see her grow and, and move forward in her time period. And it was also an example for me, an inspiration for me to actually do the same because we're in a different time. We're in 2021 where it is possible and we do have futures. She taught me that. Yeah. This woman who was written by Stephen Canals, literally from the beautiful brain that he had, the pages to the screen to my heart, she just taught me how to be a leader. Every single day, I strive to be like that woman. Got her on my shoulder, you know, like, Blanca, what are you thinking, girl? Right. Okay, you know, like, so yeah, it, it's bittersweet and it's emotional as hell. There are days where I just cry because, you know, ain't nothing gonna be like this again. And, you know, there's not gonna be a show mm. that is centered. And who knows, I'm not gonna speak that into existence because there probably will be. But as far as timing and mm. as far as the way we stormed collectively, um, I don't think there's gonna be something like that. And I just, I'm indebted, I'm happy. I'm all of the things, every single last thing. Do you ever have those moments when you're alone that you feel like Blanca's tapping you on your shoulder and saying, listen, MJ, you are Yes, strong. yes. I literally had that moment, to, um, I would say uh, now a week ago, I was literally in my, in my room. I looked into the mirror and I felt like it was my mother mixed with Blanca mm. coming out. And when I looked into myself, I just was like, you're doing it. You've made it, girl. Yes. You've done it, you know, done and, it. right. And I didn't, I could never do that, Johnny. Honestly, I never could do that. It was so hard for me to go into the mirror sometimes. And that's why I do it so often because it's just hard. But that moment a week ago, I was just like, wow, you did it. And I was like, this ain't nothing but Blanca because Michaela going to be doing cartwheels. She's going to be like, what about that? Can I do, can I sing on karaoke tonight? Can I go and jump in the pool? You know, Michaela's all over the place. It's so nice that people are finally getting to see, you know, even when you come into the room voguing, it is like, there she is. There she is. <laughs> well, Johnny, you know where you used to key. You know where the key goes. <laughs> it's a foolish. It's so foolish. Before we go, I need to know, Blanca had so many great dream dreams that she wanted to achieve. And we watched as her journey through post, she was able to achieve them and she was able to let her children achieve their dreams. Mm -hmm. But for Michaela J, yeah. I want to know what she sees for the Michaela J empire that is to come. 
five years down the line, even 10 years down the line, I hope that I have a legacy that supersedes me. I hope that I have a legacy that is lasting, that is filled with hope, that's filled with joy, that's filled with love. And more importantly, that's filled constantly with music. Music is my passion. It's my joy. It's my love. It's my everything. And I love being a part of it. I love doing it. I love how it invokes feelings out of people. I love that I can be a vessel for it. That's what I want to happen down the future. And I want it to last for years. I want this song, something to say, to last. And I feel like it has that potential to last. And the music, the EP that I'm working on right now, I hope it has music that lasts and that carrot has a fan base that can look to me so that when I am taking a break from my music and I go back into my acting, which is going to probably be a double on a double situation, honey, because a girl loves to, she mm -hmm. loves to work on both. She does. Um, <laughs> I do. I love to work, honey. Well, she loves to work. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you are watching and you're hiring the girls, MJ works. I have worked with her personally for years and she gets the job done. So. Ohio at the Ohio, baby. <laughs> Me well, and Johnny did a whole show together and we turned it. We turned it. We turned it. This was before Pose. This really, this was really, it felt like the introduction to the rest of our lives. And I'm just so happy to be on this journey with you. I'm so happy that you were able to take some time to talk to me today. And I cannot wait to see you and mwah, kiss you. I love you too. <laughs> with your handsome self and your pictures on Instagram. You know I be liking him all the time. I be like, he is just so fine. He needs to quit it.